Hello, beautiful people. How are you doing? I'm Danny the Heck. Thank you for pressing play and listening to my video. I got to be in the New York Times. I've got a whole page on Danny the Heck busting Ponzi scheme. They've called me the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger. What a name. And that means I've actually gained some followers. Well, people who subscribe to my YouTube channel. So thank you so much if you're one of those people. And you may not have seen my videos before. I record them like I'm live streaming and then I upload them later on. I don't like editing much. I'm also dyslexic. So if you read my show notes and look at the timestamps, because you might want to jump forward to the part you want to watch, then you might find some spelling mistakes. And I really love people who comment on my videos. It's your, your choice. You can comment on this video and tell me what you think. And if you hit the thumbs up button, that tells YouTube you like my videos and it sends it out to the masses. And then I can help name and shame these people that are running Ponzi scheme. And that's my main goal. My goal at the moment is to be a full-time YouTuber. And it's not easy becoming a YouTuber. So I really value having you here. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about something that happened last Friday. That was before I was famous in the New York Times, I had a young fella from an SEO company telephone me. Now if you've got a small to medium sized business and you have a website, you're probably experiencing the same thing I'm experiencing. You're getting emails every day from people. I delete these emails. The same people email me in two days time asking me if I had a chance to read their emails. So when someone telephones me based in New Zealand where I'm from and claims that they can do the SEO for my website and don't really understand my business or have they really researched my business, uh, it really annoys me. So this is the splash screen that we'll be doing today. Website design and development companies, uh, sorry, I said that wrong. Website design and development SEO companies, are you being exploited? Is SEO a scam? Now, I'm pretty aggressive to anyone that claims they can do my SEO, but I take a lot of my SEO for granted because I have some good practices when I'm doing new content. Now, I am everywhere. If you go to dehec.com, you'll see that website, that actually gets between 17 to 50,000 page views on a monthly basis. It had a real big spike last Sunday when I was in the New York Times, but that's a lot of traffic. And a lot of other people I know would be lucky to get 10 to 15 people on their website every day. So what happened? A young guy rang me up and he told me he was from such and such company, like I should know the name of the company. And I, I didn't hear it, but it sounded official but I didn't know who they were. Next thing, he tells me, that he asked me a question. He said, have you heard of the government incentive for blah, 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 something to do with, it sounded like he was saying he was either from a government department or there was a government um, scheme where the small to medium sized business may get some funding. That's what it sounded like to me. And it was well read. Next thing, I said, no, I, I haven't. And he asked me if I'd like a 15-minute free website appraisal. And I said, look, mate, I don't need your SEO. Actually, I think you're scamming people by ringing them up and selling them SEO packages. And he goes, do you realize that your website is on page eight of the search engines? Never tell Danny D. Heck that his website is on page eight of the search engines. Just a word of advice. So this is my outdoor website. And as you can see, that is actually me in the middle of nowhere with a backpack on. And I have an outdoor shop. That's me again. These are my photos. Not all of them are. And here's some of my products. So I said, you know that website that you see in the search result that's coming up in page eight actually sold $36,500 worth of sales uh, last year in 12-month period. And I said, you don't know anything about my business. And if you sold me a SEO package with five words, because that's what they normally do, you would actually harm my business more than bring more traffic to my website. So just to give you a look, you'll have to enlarge your screen if you want to see this properly, but I've done $36,000 worth of sales. I'm just going to rattle off some figures for those people who have uh, Shopify websites. I'll know what these means. First of all, I'm up 20% from the year before, which is really good. My average sale was $80. I had 501 orders 
And if you go down to the bottom here, it tells me that sales attribute to marketing. So I got $15,200 worth of sales from marketing. Organically, that means I got, uh, oh, I have to work that out, 21, uh, $21,000 worth of sales from organic traffic. Now, there's a whole lot of clever stuff in there that I'm not going to tell you about, but I only sell products to New Zealanders and that's pretty good. And to be honest, I do drop shipping for a living. And 45% of that is actually profit. So if you want any help doing drop shipping, let me know and reach out to me and I'll tell you how to do it. So the young fellow was Tom and I really got stuck into Tom. I told him to go get a job. And at the end, I told him, I yelled down the phone and said, get off my phone. I'm so sick of it. And then, then I started, I thought I'd research Tom <laughs> and I would see um who he is would you believe i found a camping store with his phone number on it and i'm thinking the guy that rang me telling me that my camping store isn't ranking and it's on page eight of the search engines and just for example if you search for nz outdoors in the google i actually come up number one and i know that people aren't searching for phrases that he thinks they are and if I had five phrases that they normally sell you as a package and I was coming up on top of the search engines, it wouldn't mean I would generate any more sales. So I'm, this actually, Tom is a, is a friggin' awesome guy. And I liked him. I've got to know Tom and his methods. So first of all, I thought Tom was working for the company that owned this website. This is his hobby website. So he's taken a lot of initiative and he set himself up a little drop shipping website. But at the time, I couldn't remember the name of the company he was from. And I'm thinking, if this is the type of websites that a SEO expert is producing, then he's got no show of helping or bettering anything I'm doing. And just while you're there, if you are looking at a website like this, these images aren't unique and you should have unique images but you can right click on any image on the internet and go search image with google lens that's if you're using chrome and what it will do it will go to google and say this image has a footprint let's go find to see where it is and here we are it is that image these are all images of alibaba and these are rooftop vehicles and he's basically doing drop shipping as well and there's the same photo. And if you come down here further, you'll see um, other photos as well. So this was really interesting to me. And if you look, click on the About Us page, there's a nice little story in there about him wanting to basically um, make your holiday better. And all these images that you can see are actually just copied images. And I'm, this paragraph might be his. But this whole website isn't going to perform very well in the search engines, and that's probably why he's not selling any of these. I can look at this website and say, I'll eat my hat if he's actually sold one. Next thing, I did a search for a um, the phone number again. I found another website, and I found a website that does website development and also um, SEO packages. And now I'm thinking, oh, so this is the company that he was calling me from. But this is a 22-year-old guy who set up two websites of his own because he's having a go at becoming a website developer. Now, I take my hat off to you, Tom, because you remind me of me when I was young. Now, this image that you see in the background is actually one and a half megabytes, and it's a PNG, and that takes a long time to load. The faster your website loads, the higher it will rank in the search engines. Now, just before I get off my high horse, I'm actually finished done explaining the back of the story, is I've got a pie in the oven and the buzzer's going to go off in five minutes. So I'm going to get on to the next part of the meeting. So anyway, I went to ring back Tom, not knowing where he was from and who he was, and I wanted to say to him, how can you ring me up, mate? I've just yelled down the phone at the guy. How can you ring me up and tell me you're an SEO when I found these two websites you have done? Anyway, he blocked my number. <laughs> He blocked my number because I told him never ever to ring me again. He did the right thing. Anyway, so I, I searched for his phone number. I found him on WhatsApp and I sent him a few more messages. And I said, can you please get your boss to ring me? Meet Kevin. Kevin is the most amazing person I've ever met. He rang me up and addressed all the issues I had. 
And I can see why Kevin has 25 people, up to 25 people working for his company at certain periods, all depends what job. He doesn't employ 25 people, but when he gets a job, he's got a lot of contractors he can bring in to do certain things. This guy really knows how to run a company. And he explained that Tom was a little bit shaken after talking to me on the phone. And obviously, he rung the wrong person. But between Mark and myself, we really did discuss, you know, is SEO needed? And is it a scam? And what services does he provide? And why? Because I was telling him, I just can't stand these companies that ring people up all day long. Because often what happens is you go to a website development company and say, Look, I want a website designed. And they'll say, How much? And you say, Four and they'll say, Four and a half, five thousand dollars. You get your website and you're all excited and you're sitting there waiting for it to come up in the search engines and nothing happens. So then you go back to the search engine company and say, why doesn't it rank up in the search engines? And then they say, oh, you need to spend money on an SEO package. And they'll probably charge you anything from $500 to $2,000. And then they may even encourage you to spend a monthly fee. Now, if I was ever going to use a company to do my SEO, honestly, this company I'm about to introduce you to, I would recommend their services. And this is Kiwi. KiwiWebsiteDesign.nz. Now, I'm not being paid for this at all, but I really gave it to one of their staff members who was a lead generator. I, I had a guess that the guy was young. I, I didn't realize, I've explained my story, but the young fella was awesome. He's having a go developing a website of his own. He's going to learn. The only way you're going to learn how to be good at SEO is by having a go yourself and find out what works and what doesn't. You can go to these SEO companies and you can, um, you know, spend a ton of money with these guys and get nowhere. Uh, and honestly, if you think that your website, what you really want to do is you want to go to these website development companies who claim that they can have you coming up when you search for a certain term, and you want to gauge the results that they you get after they've done some work. So, for example, if you went to a company called EvilGenius.co.nz. I've just done an hour and a half's worth of tickling up because I noticed that that company had no SEO. And I said to my mate who owns the business, you've got no SEO. So go in there, get a couple of hours work done, tickle up the website so it's got it's keyword friendly. But, you know, when I construct a website, I make sure the images are named. I make sure the content is on each pages. And these website development companies that charge you for a five-page website and an eight-page website – you, they must think I'm crazy. I used to develop websites that were over 100 pages. Now, I used to have 45 different rental car companies that used to use my services, and I was doing 98% of all their internet advertising. And they all wanted to come up in the top 10 of the search engines. A lot of strategies are needed to actually have that happen. Um, so I used to start writing itineraries uh, about, so when people were hiring rental cars, and they wanted to go from, say, like uh, Christchurch to Auckland, they would be searching for the activities, they would stumble across the um, website, and then they would have advertising wrapped around it. A bit like driving down the road and seeing a billboard advertising a rental car for hire or a jet ski or a boat for hire when you're on holiday. You're the same sort of thing, really, but I'm not going to get into that today because this is actually a podcast. And this podcast was when I met Mark, and I must say I have the utmost respect for Kiwi Website Design. They uh, uh, they looked after, they just did everything right. And um, I had to eat humble pie, and I may be a bit gentler on the next person that rings me up and offers me a CEO, a CEO package. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press play. The buzzer's about to go off. I'm going to grab my pie. I'm going to go cook myself dinner, and I'm going to let you listen to this podcast. And when I come back, I hopefully won't interrupt you um, much. Also, I'm going to have a dual screen, so when they're talking about different things, I will bring up another thing. So I, if you hit the full screen mode, you'll be able to watch and see all the graphics on the screen. So here we go. Meet Mark, lovely guy. Um, so the question here is, are you being exploited by these SEO companies? Do they actually do a good job for you? Uh, and is SEO just another scam or is it getting low hanging fruit? The first five minutes, I apologize, I'm probably a bit uh, tired and grumpy, but you'll see the whole conversation really pans out. So here we go. I'm so impressed, Danny, by the way. Honestly, like, I don't know, I know it's been weird that how we met, but like, after I looked at your profile and how you've set up everything, it's very impressive. 
Oh, well, we try. You learn every day. <laughs> so yeah. it's a, it is a learning curve. I mean, yeah, I just, uh, I lost my business to COVID. So I used to have a business networking company, tried to move everyone onto Zoom, and it was just um, really um, hard. Yeah. And um, so then I thought I'd start doing online workshops. And because I, with my business networking, I used to do tutorials. Mm. And they were quite cool. And so I thought I'll make them into workshops. But no one wants to do workshops. Everyone's too busy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So um, I got a whole lot of gear. And here I am. I'm now a YouTuber and a podcaster and all sorts of things, which I never thought I'd do. It's just going to make, try to make money out of it now. <laughs> but like from what I know about the industry, right, because I follow it like quite closely, like the thumbnails, the way you've set up the podcast and the YouTube videos, the workshops, the website, it's all aligned with everything that everyone preaches about. So, And it's rare that I've seen anyone in New Zealand do yep. it, you know so you're, you're, you're very early on it in my opinion oh well we'll give it a go i've got uh i was in the new york times uh on saturday i got a in the printed edition i don't know how i, I did that but um it was so awesome because that's sort of like starting to get a bit of recognition wow, for of the work for your brand hey for the brand for danny the brand your brand yeah your... well they nicknamed me the crypto ponzi scheme now i'm waffling on a wee bit here so excuse me for that but if you um want to Go into the description of the video and they'll put timestamps so you don't have to listen to me waffle on. However, the start of this is showing I've never met Mark before. I talked to him on the phone for about five, ten minutes um, originally on the Friday. And there, so let's schedule a time, let's do a podcast. And this is the result of it. So I'll let him carry on. And when we just get to know each other, and I don't like editing this sort of stuff out in case you think it's all staged, I want it to be authentic and genuine. Mm. Um, Avenger. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a real treat. Um, Was it about FTX and stuff? or? Oh, a little bit. Um, more about um, Ponzi schemes that we do, um, which um, I'll just make sure I'm recording this correctly anyway, because it's nice to have a bit of neamble. No worries. But there's a Ponzi scheme out there called Hyperverse, and from my calculations, it's about a $4 billion scam. Wow. I sort of got on about 10 months ago when somebody was trying to encourage me to come along to a meeting. And then they, um, and I said, what's the meeting about? And they said, oh, it's an opportunity for you to be able to um, buy a house and everything that you want. And I went, okay. So finished up somebody who knew me from my business networking, who's always promoting every multi-level marketing scheme out. And then mm. I just did a quick, a quick uh, overview and realized it's a Ponzi scheme. Wow. Yeah. And then and I thought... Did they give you two cents on it, did they? they Saturday, yeah. Did they interview you on um, your thoughts on it? Uh, um, yeah, they did. They basically... I, it's a long story, but basically I used to be a Jehovah's Witness and I got kicked out of the organisation. And there seems to be a parallel with people pre preaching what they believe is true. And then when you don't go by the rules, they kick you out. And it's very same with these Ponzi schemes. As soon as you start questioning that it's a, a Ponzi scheme, they just boot you out. Yeah, they're protecting the, um, system. They're protecting their narrative. Yeah, that's the the clever word for it. You look like you've got a pretty good slick setup where you are, though. You've got a good screen behind you, and good lighting. I'm in a boardroom at the moment, to be honest. So oh, that helps. Behind, behind closed doors, there's a boardroom here. So I've been in meetings all morning, which has been great, which is hor horrible for productivity, back-to-back -back meetings. Um, but yep needs to be done and i really enjoyed our conversation because like i said to you um in our short phone calls there's some some merits to what you've said about cold callers i totally agree and i've been yeah. in the industry since 2009 and i've cold called myself you know like many times before yeah um, you probably probably won't like my take on it and i'll just i'll, I'll tell you my take on it and i think it's going to have both perspectives but I, i've been doing website development for 25 years you see mm -hmm. And I've also, because I've owned a business networking company, I've had a lot of businesses come and go. And the thing I don't like about SEO companies is I don't think it's actually, I think it's a wee bit misleading. And I think, you know, to be honest, it's like going after the low hanging fruit. And I also feel like that everyone wants their website to be in the top 10 of the search engines. And it's so complex SEO. Um, and like I said to you on the phone the other day, we had obviously um, a phone call from your young fella and I, I've done a whole video all about it already. Nice. <laughs> I, I listened to it back and I thought to myself, I haven't really given the young fella his due for being entrepreneurial. 
And mm. I'm, I'm all about that. So for people that may be watching this, and you're okay if I publish this. Yep. So I got a phone call. He did say yes, by the way. You just couldn't hear him. <laughs> on Friday from a young fella who kind of rattled off where he was from. Mm. So red flags start waving to me. It's another SEO company. Well, I didn't know who it was. Yeah, that's right. And he talked to me like I should know who the company was, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then the very next thing, and you can probably help me with the paragraph he used, but he sort of alleged that there was a government initiative and asked me if I was aware of a government initiative or a government scheme that, that was around the small to medium-sized businesses. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure exactly. The, are you familiar with that paragraph? Yeah, it's to, it's it's a it's it carries on from the funding that was released in Aotearoa, um, Activate Tamaki Makoto. Um, obviously, yep. we were able to help a lot of businesses, but there's obviously a lot of um, education pieces from the government right now, from the Ministry of Business um, Innovation. Um, I think it's around digital boost. is what the word would have been. And the idea is that are you aware that the government's creating an initiative to help business owners to achieve more online? Um, and companies like us are front footing that in order to educate and hopefully in a way, you know, provide solutions to your problems. So right. something in that concept. Um, yep. that's fair. That, that sounds familiar. So my problem with that is when I heard him say it and it was kind of scripted and read off the card and it was pretty wordy, it was made me feel like, oh, this might be an opportunity for me to get something for my business funded by the government. Yep. Or the person that's talking on the phone has some association with the government department. Sure. Yep. And I thought, well, that kind of went. And then the part that didn't get me was the part where he said that we're offering a th free 15 minute website appraisal. Mm -hmm. And the amount of scams and information that I'm fighting through every day, I'm listening to that and I'm thinking, ah, oh, it's another SEO company trying to fool me into using, you know. So, I'll give you a scenario. I used to be a Jehovah's Witness, right? I used to knock on somebody's door and they'd say, I'm not interested. So we mm. wouldn't just turn away and walk out the door. We mm. would say, are you not interested in Jehovah's Witnesses or are you not interested in religion? 98% mm. of people would say religion. And then mm. I'd say, well, we can understand that because religion is responsible for so much of the mayhem in the world today. Mm. And before you know it, you've overcome that obstacle and you've kept talking and you've kept the, the customer or the person in front of you. So the first tactic, I, I didn't know, I didn't, weren't familiar with the company. Obviously, he'd sort of given me some sort of government word and got my attention, kept me on the phone. And then he said that, uh, I said, well, I don't need any SEO help. Mm. But he said, are you aware that your website is ranking number eight for a certain phrase that he's decided that my website would be good coming up in the results for? Mm. And that got my back up because the, what I know that SEO companies do, and I've looked at what you're doing, and I've also looked for companies that this young fella was working for, mm -hmm. is they pick out five keywords that the customer wants to come up in or they've researched and they've found would be good for the customer. Mm -hmm. So my, my website's called NZ Outdoors, and if you search for NZ Outdoors, it comes up number one. But... Having a website that when you search for a phrase coming up number one doesn't really make any difference, in my opinion. And my website comes up, I get, um, so I said to you, young fellow, I said, look, that website that comes up in number eight in the search engines mm. actually um, sold $38,000 worth of products last year and made me a profit of around about $16,000. How is that possible if it's not coming up in the search engines? Oh, yeah. And he said, oh, and then we sort of, I gave him a real hard time because I get so many emails and all that. Then after the phone call, I told him to get off the phone. I was a bit of a grumpy bugger. And as you said, when you rang me, what did you say? You said I, um, he was miffed why I gave him such a bar barreling. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. So then I thought, well, I'm going to research this guy. So then I researched the phone number he was calling me on. Mm -hmm. And I found a camping, um, a roof, a rooftop uh, okay. tent site selling products that are off aliexpress or alibaba mm -hmm. and that was um and i'm thinking well, here's a guy ringing up a camping store alleging that he knows how to do seo mm. he's got a, a his own camping style store and it's all done terribly wrong and i think how can you ring up and preach me a message about doing seo then i found a um an internet company looking like that was the company he was representing Long story short, um, the guy's quite enterprising. I guess yeah, he was 20. You said he's 22. He's having a go, and that was exactly what I used to be doing. Yeah. 
So my problem is, and I've done articles about it before, I just mm. don't think going to some company, grabbing $800, $700 or whatever it is, mm. telling them that they're going to come up in the search results for certain phrases that you think rank is actually ethical because I sort of think it doesn't work. There's so many things involved. Um, you know, for example, the SEO company that his website that he had had an image on the background that was one and a half meg, a, P, a PNG. So mm -hmm. a slow loading website isn't something that somebody ringing up claiming to be an SEO guy. Yeah. Obviously, then I, I he blocked my number because I was abusing the shit out of him. <laughs> and then I found him on WhatsApp. And then I just carried on abusing the shit out of him, saying he doesn't know what he's talking about. Get off the internet, get a real job. He tells me he's got a real job. And then he said, if you've got a real job, get your boss to ring me. Boom, you come in. Yeah, and, I, and unfortunately, yeah. in my opinion, Danny, I think it was, I think it's a favorable circumstance because you brought up some good points. And I think just to clarify, you have no issues with, you have no issues with cold calling per se. It's more about the lack of training when someone cold calls. Is that correct? I don't think, I think it was very good. Yeah. And I, I hate sales. I don't think, when I think back, because the video I did, I, I, I should show it to you, but I think I actually deleted it now. Okay. But I, I gave him quite a hard time and I thought, what am I doing this for? Mm. Am I doing it because I'm so sick and tired of, I get, I, think, I said to you on the phone the other day, I get an email and then I delete it. Two days later, I get another email from that same yeah. company saying, have you had time to read my email? Can you please reply? I'm offering you a, and I'm so tired of it. I'll be <laughs> worse honestly i think it's it's i mean at least have the confidence to call that client and have a conversation with them yep. as well as emails but I, I i agree in principle on what you're saying right i think i mean the the part that i was trying to understand is if, if cold calling in your opinion is dead right because there's some yep. evidence behind that um if it isn't right then what should we could better the cold calling training because definitely that needs to happen because i think what happened in your example is that um the way that tom really shared or the way that he pitched you didn't sit well with you, right? And it probably won't sit well with a lot of different business owners. If you own your own business, you have some capability understanding of SEO and someone's telling you, hey, your SEO is crap. Of course, you're going to get offended. It's like, what mm. do you know about my personal company? Um, in regards to the actual hook, I think is what you're referring to. It's like how we gain attention with any yep. pitch, right? Um, that probably needs to be worked on in, in his defense and bear with me on this. I, I don't, I think, um, you know, and I, I sort of formed a bit of a bond with Tom. <laughs> And I think I shouldn't have actually been so hard on him because he's... No, no, it's, you, you. I think it's, a, it's a reflection of um, the trauma that businesses have faced in this marketing era online over the last 10 to 15 years when it hit maturity. Because mm. we've had agencies, not only in Aotearoa, in New Zealand, but agencies overseas cold call into our country. So mm. unfortunately, we all get grouped into this one marketing um, industry. And we're all part of this industry that, uh, that basically don't want to do anything great with businesses. And we just want their money. And yeah. unfortunately, there's agencies out there that are revenue driven, right? They're not results driven. They're not value driven. They're not customer focused. And that exists everywhere. Um, well, that, and that, I, that, that's a very good point. And I think what I would like to see is what difference now some people have no idea of seo and they've got like i've got a friend that's got um i'll tell you who it is it's um genius coworking.co.nz his business is maxed out he's got uh, a full office and he doesn't need any extra, he's full and i've been i used to work in the office for five years uh for, you know for probably five years and now he's been going for five years in his new premises mm. and he said to me oh you know um i said you've got no seo on your website so I went through and he's got a um, seven or eight page website. I spent an hour and a half and I charge 120 bucks an hour. Um, so I got 250 bucks or whatever it was. And I just went through his website and had it sort of structured in a way. Mm. And I know that even though I search now, the terms that I've done, it isn't coming up yet. It's going to take time to marinate the search engines. But if I wanted to do a proper job, I would have reconstructed the whole website. I would have made sure there's text on every page. I made sure all the images are named correctly. It is. Um, it titles is. to match. And it's a whole formula. Yeah. And I think, you know, like I said to you, there's another company out there, and I won't name them because, um, this, but they develop a website for four or $5,000. Mm. And then they, the customer comes back and goes, oh, it's not in the search engines. Oh, well, you need to pay another $1,800 for us to optimize it and keyword it out. And I'm yeah. going, what? And I get so sick of that, and that really gets my back up. Because when I construct a website uh, for a client, normally I only charge 10 hours of my time, which is 1200 bucks, and mm -hmm. I'll set them up a website. Then I teach them mm -hmm. how to post blogs, where to put the words, and we do that like on Zoom. You're an educator. 
Yeah, and I think rather than give a guy a fish, I'm going to give him a fishing rod. And, you know, and that's my mentality. And I, I get it must be tempting when you've got 20 staff. Like, how many staff have you got in your... Oh, um, it ranges because we have a lot of contractors depending on projects. Um, but I would say full time would be 25. And then depending wow. on the contractors and how large the number of projects we have, because we could have 100 sites in development at one time, right? So but that means that we wouldn't hire 30 developers because those yeah. projects come to an end. Um, if those contractors do well, we offer them full time work. Um, but with contractors at any given time, probably another 10 to 15 contractors on top. Wow, um, that's amazing. I can't even comprehend what that would be like. And this is why, you know, keeping a monster like that going, you have to have cash flow coming in. We, yeah, we do, yeah. And we've been around for 12 years, right? Don't forget. So mm -hmm. we've uh, met, we've, we're, so my, the company I work for, I'm the general manager for, is KWD. Um, yep. We predominantly build websites. We're, we're a full stack marketing agency that now jumped into software. Um, and the reason why I'm hearing out what Danny's saying is because I really believe that there is a lack of training in sales, and that's a that's a mm. big issue. If you're making an outbound call call to businesses in New Zealand, you should be highly trained and highly empathetical with those businesses. And I guess where um, Danny's experiences at this point, I am thoroughly impressed with this guy, and um, I, you know, like I just love the way he handled me, and he also handled my problems, and he took the time out to address the issues that I had. And it actually has changed my thinking of SEO companies. And the next phone call I get from a, um, I might be a little bit different. Come from is that there's so many other businesses that try to hook business owners in a way um, that is misleading. And that is the wrong way to do it. I totally agree. Because if you start on a misleading note, then what assurance do you have? You're not going to do that carrying on in your process. For us, we have a much rigorous, a much more rigorous process, Danny, right? So we have the initial appointment call. We have a discovery session that we do on Zoom. We have yep. really discovery sessions where we figure out if we can help the client or not, right? So we actually do a full scope on their website and we put a report, page spin insights. We do meta analysis. I've seen these reports. I yeah. mean, I, you know, they come back and it's a 24 page worth of something telling and, you. Yeah. And I just get so, I just blur over, it. you know? Yeah. And I, I think, um, yeah, I just don't think, I just thinking, I don't like seeing the packages where you, you it's basically, oh, look, I had a look at one of your websites and it was the, the roof racks and I searched for the roof racks and the phrases that you, actually it might not even be you guys, but there's a roof rack company and you search for bike carrier or roof rack and you come up in the top 10. And I think if somebody bought that, they'll probably think, well, that's the best I can do and SEO, you know. I mean, I just think it's so expensive to do proper SEO. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. I think the key here is, right, which is something we need to discuss, is why SEO is the point of discussion, right? Because I think it's a really important facet because I believe it's not by happenstance that SEO is becoming more and more important than it's ever been before. And mm. I'll explain why, in my opinion. Google AdWords in 2011 was much more affordable, right? You're talking about 20 cents, 50 cents to $1 click costs. Google yep. AdWords became a premium product, which means that the only the only two ways or three ways to get on the first page of Google, which is what we know of the end search, right? 95% of people, when looking for a product or a service or professional, they go onto Google and find what they're looking for on page one. That's why it's been a massive focus for strategies online for businesses, small to medium, even enterprise. But when Google became a premium product, what was the other way to get on page one, right? Like it's, it's only going to be- maps. Or, or maps, but maps is local, right? And there's only three spots possibly that shows. So if you're a nationwide company, you can't rely on maps alone to get you there. Um, so I believe SEO has become more and more popular because AdWords is becoming less and less affordable. And there's only certain, there's only two avenues apart from maps to get on page one. But I think the other part that you're referring to, Danny, is that you can't put your whole budget on SEO and AdWords alone because multi-channel marketing is where we are right now. You have to have a multi-channel strategy in order for your business to reach the right audience in the right way to build right trust and right attention. Um, and it's something that we've taken on board, right? A lot of our strategies now are maturing to social media because it's, it's an amazing brand awareness. Oh, I don't know, mate. Um, this is where, like, if you looked, I'm just putting my um, my partners to send me a message. I'm recording, so everything's on mute now. <laughs> I hope this is recording properly because I've had problems. I, I have another program for recording um, podcasts normally and uh, it gives me speak of you and it was a painful. But anyway, hopefully we're getting this good. Oh, she still got through even though I've got it on mute. Oh, anyway, um, and just in case you're wondering, no, it didn't record properly. Hence why I'm doing a bit of a talk over on it because it's better when you've got both people in the picture in what we call gallery view 
but I figure out how to fix that now because I don't usually use Zoom, but it's just easier. So that's why it's got my big face in it when I'm talking and his face in it when he's talking rather than us doing a side-by-side view. Mm. I'll give you a scenario how I don't feel... Let's go back to the original one. And as they say, we looked at my NZ Outdoor camping store. Your mate told me I was on page eight when he searched for a certain phrase. I argue the fact that if I were relying on that phrase to come up in the search engines, he wouldn't help me. In fact, he'd probably hinder my sales. And he goes, he disagrees. He said, you know, because you want to come up for camping store. And I go, no, because what he doesn't know is NZ Outdoors used to be called campinggear.co.nz. The first year, it only sold seven or nine thousand dollars worth of products, and I rebranded it to NZ Outdoors because it was more general. And then when I create the category structure for all my products, you know, they are all you know like sleeping bags and mats and all associated like mine. And I'm pretty good at doing the structure because I believe structures everything. All right. Mm-hmm. So at the moment, to sell thirty-eight thousand dollars worth of products in twelve months, I pay five dollars a day to Google. And the rest of my traffic is organic. Now, 50% of my traffic's organic. The other stuff is paid. 65% of my sales actually comes from the $5 I spend with Google a day. Due to the positioning, you reckon, or due to the keywords you targeted? No, well, when I look at the analytics, people are landing, like I often say, you don't want your website to have a front door. Like people always say to me, oh, people navigate. They go here, here, here. And I go, no, they don't. Every single page of your website actually people land on that specific page so it doesn't matter if i've got the worst seo on the home page i'm not going to spend you know seven or eight hundred bucks or fifteen hundred dollars trying to get five words in the top 10 of the search engines all i'm Mm. worried about is adding a product into my shop and it coming up in in google and and organically within 24 hours yeah what what, what i was going to say was two things can be right at the same time right two things can be right at the same time one you're not on page one of google for a particular keyword and two, that keyword is not a keyword you want to be on Google for, and it won't drive more revenue. So Tom wasn't wrong, I guess, in a say in saying that you weren't on Patreon for that. Let's category. not pick on Tom anymore. No, no, no. But however, he was <laughs> yeah. possibly wrong in the sense that he didn't understand your business well enough that that wasn't something you're targeting. That's right? brilliant. What you just said is brilliant. He assumed. Just I don't want to stop there. I don't know if you've been watching me on the other screen here, but I searched for tents in hammock, and you can see that that category there actually come up in the results. Now, it didn't come up in the top 10. However, I have maybe 80 categories that will come up in the same way. And this gives me a big footprint on the internet, and it does help my website. Uh, So my category structure is really important, and so should yours be if you're trying to get good SEO. It is actually about structure of a website more than just keywords. So while I'm on my high horse, literally... If I wanted to make a quick buck, I could go out there, pick five phrases, I could knock on your door, I could be a a nice person and tell you that if you want to come up for these five phrases that sound pretty good to you, they even have good Google um, credibility, Uh, what am I trying to say? So let's say I think, I do research and I find out camping gear is a phrase that has 10,000 people a month searching for it, I'm going to optimize your website so when people search camping gear that your website is in the top 10. I'm going to pick five top phrases. I'm going to optimize your whole website so that it comes up on those top five phrases. I believe that you should use every letter of the alphabet. So all the different types of products that I have in my shop are what I want coming up in the results. So just just like I showed um, over here, oh, I can't do it in a hurry. Oh, yes, I can. So let's just say I want, uh, um, well, let's just use this product here, for example. Now, this is a back stretcher thingy. Now, the reason why I put this on here, so at the top here, you've got the paid advertising that a lot of people use. Ah, oh, I've got horrible advertising on here. Hold it. One minute, please, caller. And you can see that I may not even come up on the paid advertising at the top. If I click on one of those and I finish up going to another website, it will follow me around. <laughs> if I come through here and look at the general results, you can see that I actually come up in the free organic results. Now, if I have 1,700 products, 
in my website. Excuse me, I've drunk a beer. 1,700 products in my website, then I have 1,700 keywords and phrases that potentially people could find me on. So every single product I add into my website, I want to have it structured in a way so that product has a good go at coming up in the results. So when somebody comes to me and go, look, I'm just going to sell you five phrases for $700 and you don't know anything about search engine optimization and, and you're thinking, oh, should I invest in the CEO? I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I, I don't really think so. Anyway, I'm not going to interrupt, but once again, if you don't have, uh, I will interrupt, if you don't have any knowledge about SEO and your website isn't, you don't know how well it's doing, then you really want to put Google Analytics on the back end of your website. And if your website is getting, I don't know what your website's about. So let's say I'm about building personal brands. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said that tohec.com gets between 1,700 and I think the most I've had is 52,000 page views per month. Now, I can guarantee that most general websites would be lucky to get 30 visitors a day. And I would even go back to 10 or maybe five visitors a day. Now, if you put Google Analytics on your website and you think, I'm not getting the traffic, what's the use of having a website? You might as well market your business on a Facebook page. But you should optimize your social media. And it's like, social media is like the grandstand. Your website is what you can control. You can control what goes on the website like you would at a game. So you're the field and all the social media is the grandstands. So having a website is really important, but you want everything going back to your website. And that's why I get so much traffic. And I've been doing it for years. And I've been building it up slowly, so you, you won't get it. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say, and I won't ramble on too much more, is you need to gauge how well your website's doing. Then start experimenting. Go off to uh, Mark and ask him to do a basic website SEO groom. And get your website up to speed. I mean, not, I'm not saying spend two, three, four thousand dollars with them. It might even be, you know, a thousand dollars. And just say, can you just go through and comb the hair of my website? Can you get rid of some of the bad things that my website developer that I got really cheap from some country? Um, and then you will probably find that your website will, over the next three or four months, gain traction, and you could be getting fifty to sixty visitors to your website each day instead of five or ten. And that, that's what I do for a lot of people. Um, but uh, let me ca let's carry on before I get waffly. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and uh, and that's what your 15-minute appraisal, which isn't long enough for me to – I mean, I, I talk to people. I look at their websites. I do the same thing, and I say, look, you, just go write a blog, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and I'll show you how to title it nicely, put three pictures in, make sure they're called the same as the title, and you'll come up yeah. in the search engines. But just because it ranks doesn't mean you're going to sell something. No, of course not. And this is where we this is where we find um, our customer niche, right? And you're not one of them, definitely not. So, yeah. in terms of how our business is set up, at that point, I was really hurt. <laughs> we are positioned to help those businesses that don't have the time, expertise, or knowledge for their marketing, right? Because yeah. not every business does. Because most business owners lack time. That's really it. Money and time is where they lack the most. And and what he just said, couldn't agree with him more. And um, I'm really impressed with Mark. I'll, I'll say that. It was awesome. We're going to catch up for a coffee when I'm in Auckland over Christmas, hopefully. Time yeah. to um, put into their family and their business and money to put into their family and business. See, and I, I get that. But I bust Ponzi schemes. And the <laughs> problem is I bust Ponzi schemes because I see people who aren't educated in the crypto, um, mm. investing in crypto. And yeah. I think, you know, like the, the sales, the lead generation phone call at the start, irritates me because I know the person that's not the average beer will see feasibility in it and it obviously works mm. and I, I would like to say like if if you did five keyword strategy on my website I'd like to see an increase in sales somewhere mm. you know and I'd like to be able to gauge that somehow but then okay now you like so for example I've got a mate that does one and a half million dollars worth of sales a year on his website. He spends two and a half thousand dollars a month on his SEO. He gets contacted every couple of days from somebody saying they can do it better than the, the other guy. It won't stop. No. <laughs> no. Continue to. So he says to people, well, I do one and a half million dollars worth of sales a year. So if I lose, if I get less, if you play around with my SEO and you take over my advertising campaigns and I do less, will you pick up 
the shortfall because you all say you're going to increase my sales by eh, or whatever mm-hmm. and they go, oh no no you don't take that responsibility on board but i mean that's a big ask it is yeah um this is yeah. a good point to bringing up right because let's let's be honest the calls are not going to stop either from our agency or any other agency there's multiple agencies that has an outbound team fortunately for us 90 percent of our total projects come from an inbound channel from our marketing from our own seo from yeah. our social media from our email marketing basically we have a blueprint that we've been able to grow our business then we put that blueprint to our clients right whichever we see fit i guess the question we got to ask though is for those businesses that are going to continue to get cold called right what how can we actually help them because i think it's a really good question right and like your mate who turns over 1.5 million dollars a year every single month or every single week you'll get cold called and cold called and cold called yeah. and the truth is in my opinion businesses should not be looking at other agencies if they have one or they're doing it themselves that believe they can do it better because that's mm. not the, that's not the factor for marketing in my opinion it's not the, dem- mm. uh, the most important factor the most important factor is finding out which agency or contractor or advisor understands your business and their messaging and mm. they actually get what you do because if you don't get that part and they go hey i'm an expert in seo you could be an expert in seo but if you have no idea what i do and you don't understand my messaging my services my values my goals you can't do it properly right and yeah. the same any form of marketing because that's the truth they're going to continue to get cold called and they're gonna if they continue to go this guy sounds like he can do better well just because he can do better it doesn't mean just because he's a better seo guy it doesn't mean he understands your company better yeah i'll give you i'll give you a fantastic example i i owned a business networking company for eight years it was called elite six business networking and i used to get seo companies coming along saying that they would um they would help market it and i go okay and then they would say, well, the, the best phrase for me to come up in the searching is business networking. Sure. So 200 people a month search for the word business networking. I'm in Christchurch and I do face-to-face business networking. So I'm not worried about Auckland or Wellington. Mm. So that means I'm guessing 30 or 40 people a so, month yeah. are searching for that term. So I could, get, I could be stroking my ego. So then I say to people, what, what services are you providing as a business networking company? And I'm going, well, I provide a place where people can get support. They can, um, as business groups, um, they can tell their experience, knowledge and skills to other people. They can, you know, so there's a lot of issues you have when you work and you're self-employed. Mm. So let's do a marketing campaign about how to, how to, you know, do systems and administration or, you know, come up with different ways of helping people overcome obstacles that people have in business. And, um, then I started writing articles about all the business networking companies in New Zealand and their point of difference. So then there was a company out there called B&I. Mm, I so if you search for B&I, right underneath it would be the article <laughs> I wrote about how good B&I is. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so eventually, what I'm sort of getting at is I think it would be nice to say you need a strategy around it. The, mm. the days of saying here's five keywords to make your website come up in the result, yeah, okay, but that's just part of the pie. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and strategies that you could employ, like writing blogs. I'm telling people I've got a thousand blogs on my website. Mm. Um, that doesn't make any difference, but I find trending content, and Correct. I've just been busting this hyperverse thing. I put a blog. My website gets around about at the moment about seventeen thousand page views a month. Wow. When hyperverse was the Ponzi scheme that I was busting, and I was publishing my blogs within my website. I got 50,000 page views a month. Yeah. So, and all the other blogs, what was that? It was trending and on topic, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. And and getting that in sync is quite hard for people to do. So most people, if you go to a window cleaner and you do a website about window cleaning, he he just wants to tell everyone how much the services cost and how to book them. Yeah, that's not right. You gotta add add value. You've gotta add value. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a bike shop did a video on how to change a, a tire in five minutes and put that on their YouTube channel. That's right. their biggest looked video. Yeah. You know, but, you know, I'll just go on for a little wee bit more and then I'll let you talk. But, huh. you know, like it's all very well doing TikToks and Instagrams and YouTubes and, you know, Tumblrs and, and blogging and, and uh, you know, SEO and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, what I find when I talk to people, they just get overwhelmed and do nothing. Too much information, yeah. And if you hire a company like yourself to do that stuff, I mean, mm. it's, it's a full-time job. So mm. maybe it's educating and running workshops, teaching people how to do it themselves could be an angle. It can be. It definitely can yep. be. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree. I, I do believe that. I mean, part of what we tend to do in our business model is that we tend to educate a lot, 
right? Yeah. So that the client has full transparency in what we're doing. What are backlinks? What are the blogs? Why are we choosing these keywords? Why, why in my report is there the keyword twice? Well, one's local, one's national, yeah. right? So the education piece is massive for us. And what we've realized, Danny, is that the more, educate, the more we educate clients, right? The more they actually entrust us and what we're doing is correct because yeah. they're like, I don't have time to do this at all. <laughs> so yeah. that's why yeah. I'm paying you to do it. And I think as an agency- They get overwhelmed, don't they? They do, they do. And yeah. I think that there's a couple of things that you've tackled, right? I think that businesses in New Zealand are over getting cold called, absolutely over it. That's been happening. I've made, when I was young, 100 to 200 cold calls a day, because that's what I was told to do, right? Yeah. And you see the frustrations in businesses back in 2011, 2010, 2009, yeah. let alone now in 2022. And then you have, you know, multiple countries overseas cold calling in here, selling us the, the dream. So as a business owner, it's so hard. And like that, and it's so unfortunate for some people like, um, you know, who you dealt with in our company with Tom, because he just made one cold call, but he had no idea that he, you probably received multiple cold calls of yeah. multiple pitches over promises. And he happened to be the hundredth and one cold call and he got an earful. Um, mm. No yeah. one's fault. It's just that <laughs> no one's fault. It's just I just want to say sorry for giving you such a hard time, Tom. <laughs> and I hope that you forgive me for my rudeness. But um, yeah. And I'm not going to justify my actions. Um, but I think you are an aspiring young fella. The age of 22, I can I often tell people you only get better by doing. And when I found your two websites, um, yes, there's some improvement, but you've got off your laurels and you've done something and you're making a difference. So well done you. Um, and I enjoyed researching you and finding out more about you. And um, you think you've got yourself a pretty awesome boss there. So um, well done for you. Don't give up. Uh, keep fighting the fight. This is the nature that we're in. This yeah. is, I think that's even more important for agencies in New Zealand to step up. Those that have a footprint, those that are legitimately doing and wanting to add value, right? And go, how can we better to take ourselves away from this grouping? Like you said, education. And this is why our process in the very beginning is education. We're going, um, and obviously in your example, we use a hook to try to get you into the education piece. And mm. that's why we don't actually present a solution at all, right? Until we know there's a problem. If there's no problem, like if a client goes, I'm happy, I don't need any more inquiries, I don't care about SEO, and I don't want to grow. Well, yeah. you're, not, you're, not, you're not qualified to be with us. We can't help you, right? Like, yeah. You're happy, well, you've got it. Yeah, I certainly like your approach, and I, I wouldn't be talking to you otherwise. Um, and you're a fast talker and got the gift of the gab, and that's what I've got as well. It's a it's a beautiful thing. But it's um, it's um, there is, like I think right now, like my business, my business networking company, I lost that. Um, when we try to make everyone go into Zoom after COVID, you know, and I just shut it down two weeks ago. I've been eight, nine years in doing it. And I'm exhausted as a business owner. Mm. And I'm wondering how many other businesses, are, like I used to, I have these questions that I ask people at my meetings. And one of the questions was, what's your five-year business plan? Now I used to ask that question before COVID happened. Mm. And I, they'd all have answers and they're, they're going to do this, this. And it, these days you ask that question and people just look at you like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm hoping yeah. to get a 12 month run yeah. at my business to make it sustain itself. I'm trying to survive, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm trying to think, well, you know, how can, like, if we were to network together, mm. how can we help a business? Like most people don't have a budget and yeah. they go, oh, well, I'm a business. I've got 25 staff. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, look, there's many ways. I think you hit the nail on the head, which is the education piece, right? And this is something that we've been very, very hard on in our own marketing. In our social media content, we run monthly webinars that are yep. free um, for every business to jump into, whether you're a client of ours or not. And the whole point is to educate. Because what we've done, what we're doing, and I think what we should be doing, Danny, to kind of to weed out the, the agencies that we've been discussing that are not providing the values. That Don't you think that's a great way of representing your company? Making sure that... I mean, often people call me, and because I'm into building personal brands, and I have a massive personal brand myself, people think I strike my own ego. Honestly, having a personal brand is paramount because when people phone you, I can tell they feel like they already know me. So if your personal brand is really showing people your authenticity and the like, but when I look at these images of these guys, you know, this is the general manager. I mean, it looks like a fun company to work for. And I just take my hat off to a company like this. I've always wanted to be a project manager for an internet company like this. And um, it's quite fun. So I feel a bit embarrassed the fact that I chopped into Tom so hard. But anyway, let's carry on. If an agency can provide free content and expose their strategies on how they do it, right? 
then yeah. they've got nothing to hide. Those that can't do that have something to hide, right? Because they rely on a very heavy sell strategy where they're trying to convict a, client, a, a potential prospect into buying something emotionally on the spot. Yeah. And that's dangerous, very dangerous. So like, yeah. we know that we, you, you, should, you really shouldn't buy anything on the spot ever. You should always no. be emotional. It should be a logical decision, not an emotional one. So, so um, Tom used his private phone number, and that's probably the worst thing he could have done for people like me. Because it's, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm chatting to my mate who's doing the one and a half million dollars worth of sales a year. He said, who's this guy? So we found where he lived. We found his two websites. Um, we found his LinkedIn profile. We found the three companies he's worked for. We went through all their websites, had a look, picked them all to bits, did a video, and then I thought, I don't even like the sound of this video I did. I'm going to not use it. Oh, but... Would you rather deal with someone that gave you their personal mobile, which is something that we do a lot in our business, right? So we have full yep. transparency or a block number. I think right? what, from my perspective, um, what I liked about Tom is he'd had to go to do drop shipping, but hadn't been successful. Mm. So he hadn't even implemented the knowledge that he was. And then he fessed up and he said, look, I'm just a lead generator. And I go, OK, all right, that's different. Uh, you're not. I do the talk and I do the walk. I mean, I. I, I encourage people to do drop shipping. So my partner and I have got five drop shipping websites. We do over two hundred thousand dollars worth of sales a year, and that's helped us survive losing my other business. Yeah. And now we're doing we're setting up drop shipping websites for people, and we're going to give them basically a shell website, and then we're going to educate them how to use it. But yeah. the obstacles that you may have, that I may have, that people are busy and they just want to know how to do it, but they don't want to spend any time. <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem, but you need the time. You need the How do we time. help people do that? Yeah, um, it's it's honestly, we've got to change that mindset, right? Because if you're a business owner, you have to create the time. It's so simple. Like one mm. of the, one, the, the the best business owners I've ever worked with in terms of my experience in marketing and branding are those that have some concept and idea of what marketing they're doing because mm. they, they don't feel like they're left out of the dark. The ones we struggle with the most are those that have no idea where they just spray and walk away. They're like, hey, I'm paying you X amount per month, all I want leads. And that's yeah. fine. It makes sense. But in reality, you don't see the process that we've gone through. You have no value in what we're doing. And they just, they're the, the same adage that I have no time, I have no time. But yeah. if you don't have time for marketing, right, which is such a key ingredient, if not one of the key ingredients in your business success, then mm. what are you putting time in? Right. Like it's it's something that you need to do uh, just to answer your question. I feel like business owners um, need to take the responsibility to upskill themselves. They really need to because mm. they can feel crap immediately. So if someone cold calls you and says something because your knowledge base is so high, right? So high, higher than the average. my ego now. No, no, no. But this is why <laughs> someone can cold call you and say something and you go, no, nah, that's not correct. To mm. the average, they're like, I'm not on page one. You're right. She's like, that's I, OK. Let's have a meeting. Right. Mm. And that will work. Um, yeah. And that's where obviously that, that, that problem is. So I think to answer your question, in order to help business owners, they have to invest time in understanding what marketing works for them. Now, if they realize after investing and educating themselves and going, this is what I, I think I need to do, right? And if you go, I have no time to do this, then find an agency to do it, right? Yeah. But if you're going to go to an agency in the hopes that you pay them per month and they change your whole business model without you contributing towards anything, apart from reviewing a monthly report once a month, I don't think that's a recipe for success. No. Um, I think not, you not need to have, part. you need to be active. It's the relationship part, right? I bet yeah. every single one. Of it's education, you guys. It's not that hard. It's, it's not rocket science. It's the heck science. But you need to educate. You need to understand. Often I say to people, and I'll interrupt them there, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And, you know, I left school at 14, all right? And I turned 15 over the school holiday, so I can say I did. Now, I had no education at all. I literally used to knock on people's doors asking them if I could... Um, T telling them I had a lawn mowing business. And there they say, oh, good on you. And I say, and one of you be interested in me mowing your lawns? And they would say, yeah, how much do you charge? And I'd say $10 an hour. And they'd say, that sounds cool. Yes, when can you start? And I said, well, straight away, can I borrow your lawn mower? Didn't have any equipment. And then they got me sweeping their drives, cleaning their spouting, trimming their trees. And I built up a little business at the age of 15 by doing that, you know? So, um, but when it comes to technology, I couldn't get my head around it and I really struggled. And now I'm fully in bed with technology. Now I use voice recognition to do my writing. I select the words and I have them read to me so I can comprehend them because I'm very dyslexic, okay? So I've got a reading level of a nine-year-old. Now, to me, technology was like a jigsaw puzzle. You do all the straight bits, you put all the straight bits together and then you put all the color bits together and you look at the pictures and you try to make them all fit 
and you just keep applying yourself and then all of a sudden the overall picture will become very clear and then you just put all the other bits that you couldn't figure out in and away you go. So don't think you're stupid or don't think I don't get my head around this. Have a go. If I can do it, you can do it. I mean, look at what I'm doing with my YouTube channel. I mean, I originally started off doing a YouTube channel to gain, um, I wanted a thousand subscribers within six weeks so I could put together a workshop um, teaching people how to do the same because when you give a thousand subscribers, you can monetize your YouTube channel and you can actually make money from it. Now, I just wanted to get the knowledge, but now I've got the knowledge, I actually want to be a full-time YouTuber, not because of the money, but because I like doing these videos, and I love engaging with people. So if you do comment on this video and tell me your two cents worth, I'm not going to shoot you down, I'm going to engage with you. I love the comments. And if you hit the like, that tells YouTube you like my video. That's what it's for. <laughs> Thumbs up, I should say. And then they will send this video out to the masses because you've liked it, other people will like it, and YouTube want to have a feel-good factor. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, then that also tells them that you like my content. And then hit the bell, you'll be notified as soon as a new video drops. And that's how it works. But don't think you're stupid because you don't get your head around. At least give it a go. Because Mark's got a team of people helping market people's businesses. You know, I'm only surviving at the moment because I've got, my partner and I have got five dropshipping websites. My partner's a professional photographer and I also do quite a lot of website development, but I, don't, I haven't done any for years, to be honest. I don't really want to do it anymore. I want to be a YouTuber. So it's where you put your energy and your time, you will be successful. But if you don't change anything and expect different results, that's stupidity. Anyway, back to our friend Mark. Mark, hit the right button, Danny. For clients that you work with, you have a relationship with, right? Like you know their full names, something about their family, something about their hobbies, and something about their business. It ain't just a chat about stats and data. It's like, hey, how's everything going at a deeper level, right? Yeah. Uh, for business. And that I was a therapist for people. I don't even well, do that's... sites for people hardly anymore because I just got. You know, I just do my own stuff. Um, you know, I used to have um, a network of 15,000 pages. It was called New Zealand's Information Network. Wow. And I used to travel around New Zealand telling people I was a mobile internet consultant. And mm. I'd, I I can't read and write. I literally got a reading level of a nine-year-old. Oh, no. And I'd, gonna repeat I had yourself. a scanner that I would take with me in the car, and I'd get the brochure and scan all their images in. And then I'd copy the text word for word and get it the same as their brochure and put it online. Wow. Charge them three hundred dollars to set it up and thirty dollars a month to keep it online, and I built up a network of fifteen thousand pages um, by just doing that over nineteen ninety six and right up to about nineteen ninety nine. I got a hell of a lot of criticism for what I was doing because of the spelling mistakes and the line, nine yards and all this sort of stuff. But the the point of that was um, I started. You don't have to be good. Tomorrow, uh, don't be perfect tomorrow, be good today because tomorrow never comes, sort of thing, you know. So, and that's why, you know, once again, Tom, I, I gave him a barreling. Um, but people's expectations grew and mm. I couldn't maintain their expectation, they just wanted more, you know. At one point, I had 45 different rental car companies using me to do 99% of their internet advertising. H Rentals, A to B Rental Cars, Pacific um, Horizon Camper Vans, Pegasus Rental Cars, You Save Rental Cars. You knew uh, they were. Just all of it, you know. And then every time I got a new customer on board, I just got more inquiries. Mm. Um, but then they all wanted to manage their own um, websites. And yeah. I was, my websites were one part of a big, large network. And I just lost them one at a time. And, you know, and I, was, I think my best year for my business was half a million dollars worth of turnover in a year. And my wages were about 275 take home wages for one year. And I just thought I was unstoppable. Yeah. You know, and I was doing some really clear. This is the 90s stuff. as well, right? This is the 90s at 275, not now. Like that's. Well, that was, yeah, well, that was 204. I, I made the most money and I got involved with everything, you see. So it's like, but these days, I just haven't got it in me to, um, you know, even educating people and the trickery that you need to do to fool the search engines and the different things. I mean, I, you know, and I, I'd rather be an advisor than actually do the work because meeting the customer's expectation is demoralizing because they go over the limit sometimes and what they expect for the time it takes to get the good results. Yeah, and that's the that's the, honestly, on a, 
you're spot on, Danny. And I think business owners, if you're watching this or somehow listen to this, there's almost no marketing, and this is based on 15 years of my um, experience, that yeah. generate results overnight. It just, it's just, it takes time because marketing is about two things, in my opinion, attention and trust, right? Yeah. Gaining attention is quick. You can do, you can do that. You can put an ad tomorrow that gains a bit of attention. It doesn't yep. mean it'll get trust, right? So trust will take time because people need to trust your brand in order to inquire with you and they will gravitate towards other brands that they trust more. So you, what you've got to ask yourself is of my 10 comp competitors in the industry right now, where am I on a scale of one to 10 in trust levels? Well, these companies are eights and nines and I'm a four. So no matter what marketing you do with attention, if they don't trust your brand, then mm. they're, they're not going to inquire with you because you're, you're so spot on. Um, but also that what that means is it takes time to build trust. So you need to start plugging away and putting strategies in place that builds trust. This is all we have with so many um, other brands, right? Like we have such a trust with brands. I say this all the time to business owners. I say that if you are hungry, well, I can almost guarantee that one of the top 10 foods you would eat is a fast food joint. McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, something somewhere in the top 10. Because of the way they have instilled marketing in you from a young age, right? It's it's a long game marketing. It's not a short term yeah. thing. And I think businesses want something immediately. Right? They're like, hey, I've given you $2,000. I expect 20 leads tomorrow. And I'm not going to say that. And SEO is even harder because how long does it take to get a keyword on the first page of SEO? Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. No one knows. You cannot tell me it takes six to 18 months unless you are on that website working it, measuring a month's data and going, okay, this might be nine months if we do these things. And even then I can't guarantee it mm. because it's so dependent on the algorithms, the other sites, your content, your speed, your yeah. meters, your headers. Um, there's so much involved in it. And this is why I think business owners go to agencies because it's too complicated, mm. right? Very complicated. Um, think, it's more comp Yeah. Probably think, do you, I think you guys can make a difference to somebody who knows nothing? I definitely do. I know thing about that. Mm. I think what really got my back up, and I did give Tom a bit of a hard time, was the fact that coming up and, you know, he didn't understand my business, mm. you know, and I think, um, and I know that even if I paid you guys whatever, I'm, I feel like I'm at maximum philosophy with my website. So, it's a square, yeah. not all pegs fit in the same hole, I suppose it, I don't know if that makes sense. But you would be an unqualified client in our opinion, right? Yeah. So if we had if we had progressed into a discovery session where we would have known more about your business and the way it was set up, the discussion should have been if it was a very well trained BDM or acquisition strategist, it was like, Hey, we're not the right fit because we actually can't help you because you know you, you're good by yourself. <laughs> you're good. Like we, yeah. we you're not the type of client that we can assist and show value in. Um, for our agency rates. Those are going to be people that we can provide real value because they don't have the time or knowledge that we've had to acquire in order for us to charge equally to what we're charging. So for someone yeah. like you, with your knowledge, if we were to charge to call it 2000 a month, right? Yeah. Part of that 2000 a month that we charge is because we have all the knowledge and expertise that we've acquired over 10, 15 years mm. that you don't have. So if we speak to someone that has that knowledge, how can we charge two grand a month? We can't. Because yeah. yeah. you've already acquired that same... It's like me going... It's like me being a doctor and going to another doctor right it's like i can self-assess myself i can get a second opinion that's fine but to get them to be my gp it's a bit different because we, we have the same knowledge so all i need is a second opinion and i think what you need for businesses similar in your similar situation is that you need a second opinion more than an agency to actually actually go am i heading in the right direction is there anything that i'm doing that you think could be better that's i need not to be so grumpy when people cold call me but don't cold call me. I don't want you guys cold calling me, okay? And I don't want your emails. I don't want any more SEA emails, especially from India, because I'm getting ruder and ruder, and I'm getting grumpier as I get older. But don't cold call Danny to heck, okay? And whatever you do, I'm going to say this on a big screen, whatever you do, never ring up Danny to heck and tell him that you have an opportunity for a Ponzi scheme, okay? It doesn't go down well. I will be really rude. But this guy was lovely, and this company, I take my hat off to them. There's a good Kiwiana website company out there who I'd thoroughly recommend if you need to do some SEO. I honestly, I really liked the way he handled me and the way he got me back on track, and he didn't let the bridge that I burnt stay on fire. He went and fixed it. So well done, Mark. And good on you, Tom, for calling me because it's nice to meet your company. So not all things end terribly. Wouldn't you agree? It's probably the discussions you should be having. 
Yeah. Um, I'm all about sharing people's experience, knowledge and skills. And, um, and I think that's, that's why I've been in business networking for so many years. And I just love, you know, if I, if I go to a meeting and I learn one thing, I mean, if I was saying, what did I learn from you guys today is probably not to be so hard on somebody doing a lead generation. What I did like about, um, Tom, he spoke very good English. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I didn't have to wait for the ABX to click in, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it was, own mobile phone, don't forget. So. Yeah, but I just, it was like um, poor Tom because it was actually like um, a, a red flag to a bull, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, and I listened for a while and I thought, okay, some company, and also the funny thing is I got a phone call from another company um, about two weeks earlier that used the same government incentive. Are you aware of a government incentive thing? And I thought, oh my goodness, yes. They're just... And I just recently had one guy that had got, kept, um, I kept getting his emails and I finished up doing a video on him because I was so sick of his emails. And every time he said he promised I'm out of his database, I'd get another email. And it would be, a, and it, this had been going on for years. And then eventually I just had enough. Um, you know, and just ironically, I got another email from a, another associated company from him again. And it's just like, I'm so tired of this stuff. It's kind of like war out there at the moment. Yeah, I just don't understand how these cold emails are being allowed. It's insane. Because I thought there was some database privacy that you could, I mean, I know that the massive companies resell our email database to other companies, which is what they do. But yeah. it's, it's becoming more profound now, these cold emails. It's everywhere. And if you, cold emails is one thing. Imagine the cold DMs on LinkedIn. I mean, yeah. you have over 7,000 followers on LinkedIn. You have a very strong... Um, following based on LinkedIn, you must get so many cold DMs. Yeah, like, well, you do. But um, <laughs> to put that in perspective, I am big on social media. Not all social media works for me. YouTube works for me. Facebook, I hate it. But I would probably get at least 500 notifications a day, at least. And I, they interrupt me. Like right now, it's 11 minutes past 11 on a Wednesday night. I'm home alone. My partner's gone off um, to, to um, out of town with her son. And I find this time of night the best time to get stuff done because I'm not interrupted. And, um, and I get shit done. <laughs> so the notifications that you get from social media, are they worth your time and energy, you know? Um, since I've been in the New York Times, I've noticed that my TikTok has all of a sudden got a whole lot of people following me. So then there's a demographics of people out there who listen to the New York, or watch the, read the New York Times, who want to connect with me on TikTok. I'm 52 years of age. I'm not really a talk ticker, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, even though, just side story, one of my TikToks has had 900,000 people look at it. It was when I was in India, I'm a third world traveler of country. I've been to 35 countries, love traveling third world countries. So I went to India two weeks before COVID started happening around the world three years ago. And I took a video of Varanasi, and Varanasi where they actually burned the, uh, the dead. And I did a swooping video, 30 seconds long, put it on TikTok. And over a month, it got up to about six, 700,000 people. Interesting enough, the video before and after it I only received 5,000 views. So it didn't really make a difference to my TikTok account. I have 20,000 people following me on TikTok. All right, and they're genuine people. So having genuine, not buying people, like some people do, there's Amy, won't mention that. Um, what I'm trying to say is um, it didn't change my life. You know, you can engage with people on one platform and you, it can be exhausting. The 80-20 rule may apply in your social media marketing. Find the one that works. I'm on all platforms because I need to understand how they work simply because I was doing workshops helping people get their head around them. The best thing you can do is find 15 social media platforms. Make sure you have the same photo as your profile image. Make sure your backdrop is the same. Have a look at my social media that I was showing off before. And you'll see that I'm consistent all the way through. And if you liken your social media to being like the grandstand at a game, you can sit in LinkedIn and talk to other people who like that platform. But if you're wearing well-branded clothes and you're in a bright orange suit and a bright orange hat, when they jump from one grandstand like Facebook or Instagram or Tumblr or Twitch or YouTube, and you're wearing the same branding, 
they will recognize you. And when they land from the social media and go onto the game, which is the field where your website is that you control, they won't realize that they've jumped out of social media and onto your website. And then you can sell them something. Easy. That's how it works. But it takes a lot of effort. But I don't spend all day on Facebook. And I don't spend all day on Instagram. I do spend all day on YouTube. But that's because I like doing YouTube videos. Let's carry on. I've even taken my LinkedIn premium off now. I don't, I've had that for, I don't know, 10 years. You don't need it anymore, right? At this date, you're well, right. I don't need it, but I just, um, I, I've done courses on LinkedIn and I've showed people how to, you know, how to chat to people, you know. I mean, what you just said uh, earlier on, you said give value, give value, give value, give value. And it comes a point where I give a lot of value, but I don't get paid for it. And I've got bills to pay. Mm. And I, I just get exhausted. And then I get people who don't listen or don't do. I mean, in, in my business networking game, what used to be my pet peeve, is that right? The yeah. thing that pissed me off the most is that people would say and not do. Yeah. And that, um, like for us to have this meeting today, you booked, you turned up, you're here. I have so much more respect for you and your company. And also your approach wasn't to um, burn a bridge. And, you know, like I'm yelling down the phone at Tom because I just want him off my phone. <laughs> and I'm being a prat because I'm going, I don't want these phone calls. Oh. And then I hunted him down like an animal, found him and got chatting to him again. He's going, this guy won't go away. And I said, well, think twice before you call me next time. Yeah. And, and then I said, get your boss to ring me. And he did. Mm. And then you rung me and the way you handled it. I mean, I don't want to be known as a prat, <laughs> but I, if I listened to my own phone calls, I might have been, um, well, I would be, um, I, I'll uh, handle it different next time. No, I think for the record, don't forget, you've had a similar, you have multiple experiences leading up to that phone call, right? So yeah. like you had the cold calls, you had the emails. Of course, it's, it, I call it minor trauma. I'm a victim of social media marketing. People can find me on any platform and then try and sell me stuff. <laughs> and it gets exhausting when you've done your marketing too good. Right, in the sense that <laughs> yeah. we've had, because the cold callers is trauma. The amount of times in the past and 10 years ago when I would cold call and the person I would speak to was absolutely mad. I'm like, I, I, I've never spoken to you because yeah. I know he got cold called two, three, four times that day or whatever it was. And he's just fed up. And like, we business is hard, right? Like, mm. well, let's be honest. Like, it, this is something I tell some of our outbound agents. If someone is angry at you and says no to you on a Monday, it doesn't mean they won't give you your time on a Friday, right? Because yeah. They could be busy with a client or busy with an email or some some staff members called in sick for the day. Now they got to work. And then you cold call them trying to sell them a solution. You're interrupting their day. This is why I found it really interesting because part of the discussion I'm looking at, because um, my, my background is in, uh, I'm a human behavior specialist. I'm a psychologist by trade and went into All marketing, right. branding. And I, I want to know if cold calling. Am I doing? <laughs> it's doing great. <laughs> I want to know if cold calling is dead. And if it's not dead, how can you do it better? Hence why I was so... Oh, no, it's it's, it's was, definitely not dead. No, it's not dead. But I'm like, no. but it's important that we train our cold caller even better now. Because if not, this is the outcome, right? Yeah. This but is this, is this, this is uh, oxymoron. Is this a bad outcome? No, not at all. But this, no. is, this is one out of a million outcomes in that same situation. So I'm in the relationship building um, business. And, you know, I believe the dropping tap people uh, no i don't I, I, you get to know people the more you speak to people if you just become a better version of yourself it's going to be easy for you to connect with other people now let's say mark and i technically started off in a bad way and i blew the shit out of tom but by mark's action he won me over and now we've got a relationship of some sort so not all things that start bad stay bad and you should always work with the goal in mind to smooth out any crinkles that you have in a relationship, not just with business, but in personal life. I mean, I hate when I've burnt a bridge with somebody and you walk into a mall or a supermarket and you see that person and you think, oh, there's such and such. I, I, you know, we all have disagreements, but it's, it's how you handle them. And honestly, I really enjoyed Mark and the way we had a good relationship. We had a lot of common interest and maybe I'm a victim of too much on my plate at the moment. Maybe I'm exhausted. I am. I've lost my, one of my businesses I've worked for eight or nine years. You know, I couldn't make something. I'm so passionate about work and I had to throw the talent on it. You know, it was just horrible. And I actually felt like when I shut down my business networking company two or three weeks ago, that I felt like I failed something I was passionate about. And I'm not a failure. I've done lots of amazing things, but I couldn't, I didn't have the time and energy 
to keep that business going. It, I couldn't build it back after COVID-19. I didn't want to start recruiting people. It's just not my business. I've done it. It's time to close that chapter and move on to the next thing. I want to be a YouTuber. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm passionate about. If you find something you're passionate about and you make a living out of it, you'll never work another day in your life. And that's what's really cool. Right? Yep. So if there was a million times, call it a thousand times that you reacted that way, 999 times would have been bad, right? In my opinion. Because I think we were just lucky enough that we have uh, me, you, and Tom in all the same situations that we led to this. And it's become a very healthy discussion. Because what it allowed me to do was going, what's wrong with the script? Right? Is there a way that we can better this to not piss off clients? Don't tell me I come up on page eight in the search engine. <laughs> so that we can actually show them that we're trying to add value. Yeah. Qualify them. Because it's so hard to qualify someone on the phone on a cold call. So Now, I know you've been watching this, Mark. Why not have the approach that you tell people that you were searching Google and you found their website coming up really good. That might blow them away, but you think we could do it slightly better with tweaking it a wee bit, or a different approach. But honest truth, I mean, people have rung me up numerous times telling my website doesn't rank, and I go, well, how did you find me? <laughs> you know? Right. Mm. Um, and if, I come from a time, Danny, where in 2011, we were um, selling marketing um, for a particular directory. I'm not going to say who where the training was trained that we could get someone in and out of a phone call within five minutes, right? With a sale within five minutes, yeah. that emotional selling, you are selling them emotionally, not logically. Right. Mm. So, and I know if we just think about the things that we've all bought emotionally, not just marketing, we regret it later, later on when we start thinking logically and we're like, why did I do that impulse purchase? Mm. Right. And they create problematic clients. So for us, we know that if we follow the process, or where we're not emotionally selling, we create a logical solution, assuming there's a problem. If there's no problem, not qualified. That simple. Yeah. I, I went to a business networking event I put on, there were 60 businesses there, and we used to have a format where each person got to talk for two minutes, and then they got to, the other person got to pitch their business, and then we'd switch tables. It was like speed dating, but business style. Okay, and yeah, pers yeah. Personally, I hate that. Um, pitching, I don't like people pitching their businesses at me. I'd rather say, what's your pet's name and what do you do on the weekend and what's your activities and build that personal relationship up first. Yeah. However, everyone was sitting there and they, I've done these events quite a lot. They had their business card ready and I got a public speaker to come along and do a 20 minute talk on the art of listening. And I thought that was brilliant because everyone was ready to pitch, but now they've just been told that being a good listener is, is more, um, better. Really? And I, I think um, the value I've got out of being a person, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm dyslexic, so I really struggle with the written word and the like, but I've done a lot of speaker training. I've gone to Toastmasters. Uh, mm. I did a Dale Carnetti course. I got it gifted to me, actually, by somebody who was in my networking. And the art of, you know, being intuitive to listen to people, um, knowing somebody's name, using somebody's name in a conversation. I mean, I don't know how many people hang up on Tom, but I'm kind of thinking that when you ring up somebody, say, look, I'm Tom. Uh, I'm from an internet marketing company called Blah. Mm -hmm. Rather than say a red life name like I should know it. Mm. And I'm not saying he did. You listen to the calls. Mm. You know, it, it, when you've got, you've only got, you'd know this, you've only got a minute to actually talk to somebody before they hang up or they want to carry on talking to you. Yeah. So uh, there would be techniques that Tom will get better at naturally. Yeah. And I think, I'd, you know, like when I checked out what he did, and the go he's had at being an entrepreneur online, I was actually really impressed with him. He's tried. He's 22 years old trying, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I sold everything I owned when I was 23 and hitchhiked around New Zealand selling websites. And I even bought the first digital camera that came into the market on my credit card, maxed out. with, And I had $300 in my bank account. And I'm hoping... You know, I went on. Every, I knocked on every door I could in Queenstown. No one wanted my business. I finished up going to Wanaka. No one wanted my business. And then I went to Lake Harwea, and the guy goes, "Yeah, we'll do it. We'll put you up for free accommodation while you build us a website." And then my phone started ringing. The tandem skydive Wanaka people said to me, "Oh, we want a website, but we've got no money, and we'll throw you out of an airplane." <laughs> And so I said, okay. And then eventually I started doing the websites for Blackwater Rafting, the Hully Services, and I'm oh, literally a young guy hanging out of a helicopter. I went in 14 helicopters in, I think, three days using my, my 512K memory camera hanging out of a helicopter trying to take photos of the glaciers. And mm. I thought, how did I find myself here? <laughs> you know, and it, it was because I had the initiative to start things. So I yeah, did yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's important. I mean, I just, I, I personally feel that businesses are really struggling. Yeah. I just don't like seeing them put money into things where they're not getting a return. And oh. SEO companies, to me, you know, I have, um, I've had probably a lot of bad experiences. And to me, if I charge $700 and spent I literally like my mate, he paid me two hours, he actually paid me an hour and a half. I did $500 worth of work of him and he was up to about 300 and I said, well, how about we top it up to 500 and I'll do your SEO and he goes, yeah, done, cool. That was his budget. Nice. You know, but then the difference I made, I know myself, I would have made a difference doing his SEO for him. Yeah, massive, more than what you've, more than what he paid you. Right? Yeah, but would whether be... he values it, he might not for a while, but he knows me and he's got that relationship. Mm. So I think I would be building those relationships, you know, and it's, I, if I talk to you, the first thing I do is I connect with you on LinkedIn. Mm. I go to your LinkedIn profile, I check out who you are. I go through and look at all your activities that you've been doing. Um, with Tom, I went and looked at his, uh, the last three companies he worked for. Mm. I went through all the websites. So don't think people, I mean, I don't know if I'm, well, I am a bit unusual, but I research who's talking to me. I search for people's phone numbers. Should, you know, yeah. I was surprised when he lived in a $1.4 million house and I'm thinking he still lives at home with mum and dad, I think, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. And he's just a kid trying to have a go. And I think that's, um, you know, good. Hmm. And, and I think I'm saying, yeah, we have to encourage that because we need more entrepreneurs. We do. Yeah. They don't it. teach it at school. No, they don't. And the school, and we know how, how delayed or how back backwards the schooling system is. Um, Cause once you leave school, you're like, wow, I knew none of this. Yeah. Why did no one yeah. tell me about tax? It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what, why did I spend six years in that and telling me about all these things and no one told me that I have to pay tax now at certain percentages? Like, I know adults that are in their 30s that don't understand tax brackets and how they yeah. work. They think that the highest tax bracket means they're going to tax the whole figure of that tax bracket. Yes. Um, yeah, I remember that. When yeah. I got up there, I'm thinking, oh my goodness. I um, And this, yeah, it was um, at the time I put myself into a trust thinking I can, um, <laughs> you know, save some of my dollars, you know, and, um, but it was only yes. after I went after the, I think it was 60 at the time, but now it's 80, isn't it? You go over that through. Yeah. yeah. And these are the things that we, you know, I, I think that we, as a, as a farming nation, like New Zealand, a tourism and farming nation, we realize how, how really, how imprisoned we are to our main economy drivers, right? Which is farming and tourism. When tourism disappeared, this country struggled, still is struggling to this yeah. day. So we need more entrepreneurs doing things that in the tech world, because it's got no time, it's got no time zone problems. It's got no currency issues. And you have clients throughout the whole world. Imagine, imagine if one of our companies, one of our agencies in New Zealand, right, became one of the largest media agencies in the world. Yeah. That was bringing in 10, $15 billion a year. Now you're it talking dirty. The economy. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of like Wicker Studios for movies in a way, you know, they made a, a standpoint. Um, yeah. I've got to ask you, do you know Paul Spain? Paul Spain. Uh, does No, it doesn't ring a bell, sorry. Uh, no. Gorilla Marketing? That rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. He does um, NZ Tech podcast. Um, and you're in Auckland, aren't you? I am, yeah, in North Shore. Right, yeah, because I'm going to, um, up there on the 20th because my partner's family live in, and I go out there for Christmas. But I normally catch up with Paul. Um, and Paul... There was a, an app over um, lockdown called Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. I know of it. Yep. Yep. And we, I spent probably a year of my life in there. And that was all, that was really good sort of, um, I do podcasting. So I wanted to learn more about my gear and talk to other podcasters and figure out what microphones are good and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> so um, they helped me a lot. And I met Paul. And now we've got a wee network of people that I go visit. So, I mean, hey, if we're in Auckland, yeah, um, let's catch up and have a cup of coffee. And I would love to, Daniel. Like, like I said to you, there's things that I that you've said that has a lot of merit that I love to unpack, and I feel like I can just kind of ask you more questions because Canterbury is a particular region compared to Auckland, right? It's very different yeah. in that sense. I would personally rather be in Canterbury um, because of how Auckland is at the moment, and we have actually we have three project managers in our company are from Canterbury. Um, All right. That have moved up from here. They finished university there, couldn't find opportunities. They've come up to Auckland and great. So I'm a big fan of it. But yeah, when you are up here, um, I've got your LinkedIn, you got my mobile. I'd love to meet with you and unpack a bit more um, yeah. because a lot of merits in what, you, what you've done. And I think that the key here is just to kind of conclude is that because of this conversation, it's, it's allowed us to look at our script and go, what can we do better to, mm -hmm. you know, to not, to not let this happen again? And there's a lot of things I've learned from it already. And I think that improvement. <laughs> Don't call Danny de Heck. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely number one. I'm um, on that. So, and I feel bad for anyone that might call might call you again. Unfortunately, yeah. it's going to happen again, Danny. You know, Don't call like me. someone's going to yeah. call you probably yeah. tomorrow. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. So, all, all blessings to them. No, but I appreciate it, Danny. Thank you very much for your time. It's been it's been great. Yeah, no, it's cool. And hopefully, this is recorded um, properly. Uh, if it's a horrible one, it isn't in 
gallery view and it will only pop up when I talk and we won't be sitting here side by side, which is a bit of a pain. It's not in gallery view and that's what I'm doing a talk over. So I'm still learning. I've only done like, I don't know, 100 of these interviews and I still get it wrong. <laughs> However, it's quite a clean recording, so I probably might scrape it out and put it on my podcast if you're all right with that. Easy, yeah, absolutely. So where are you from? Uh, have a guess. Well, no, I'm going for your company where you're from. Oh, you mean like me as my nationality or in terms of... Well, we'll do that as well. So where are you from? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I'm. Oh, I sure. Do you want me to guess? Yeah, yeah, go on, have a guess. All right. I've enough. traveled 35 countries and I've met a lot of people. Um, oh, boy, that's a goodie. Um, I'm I'm not sure, actually. I'm, I, I'm, I don't know. Is it Indonesia? It's close. Right? This, is, this is why it gets thrown off. My dad's Puerto Rican, but my mum's Filipino. So right. I'm predominantly Southeast Asian, but there's like Spanish and Puerto Rican influence in my bo- in my body. Um, Are you a good I'm- singer? Pardon? Are you a good singer? Horrible singer. Horrible. <laughs> I, I, I talk for a living, but God forbid I have to sing, I tell you what. It's just, I, I was not given that talent at all. Not How anymore. long have you been in New Zealand for? 1995. All right. Here. I'm 33. We came here. Oh, my God. You're just a spring chicken. I'm a 52-year-old guy. Nearly got 20 years up in you, mate. Well, we get along, right? So, um, But, yeah, came here on holiday, never left. So been here my whole life. I never never went back to the Philippines as well. So um, stayed here the whole time. Um, Right. And I've got to ask, because my channel, my YouTube channel, is all about busting Ponzi schemes. Have you got – do you dabble in crypto? Uh, I did Bitcoin, definitely. Um, I bought in prior to the COVID. Um, I bought in at 7,000. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I I have a good friend who's heavy into it. Dollar cost averages every week, so thank you to him. Um, He told me to buy. And then I got out at one of the highs in 60, about 62. Yeah. Um, And I haven't gone back back in since. And the reason why I haven't gone back in is because I know nothing about, I know blockchain is not going to go away. I know it's not. But I've spent no time in understanding it. Let's hope not, right? And what's happening? Yeah. I love technology. People think I hate it, but I, I do love the technology behind it. And um, it's it's got a purpose, but now it's been taken over as scammers. That's the problem. Well, look what's happened with the volatility of the market, right? I, I, like I said, I don't know much about it, but watching what happened with FTX, right? And going, whoa, if that can happen, that's worrying, right? That's a lot yeah. of people's money there. And um, it looks like it might get out of it and Binance is out of it and whatnot. Um, but me personally, I have nothing in crypto at the moment. Not at the moment. Right. So you don't follow Ponzi schemes. So if I could interest you in investing $300 and tripling your money within uh, 600 days, is that appealing? Do you know who you need to talk to, funny enough? Do you know who's really heavily into this? Just just, just, just because of faith. Do you know who it is? They will, they'll be able to... It's Tom. Tom, if you are investing in multi-level marketing Ponzi schemes, which you probably don't think they are, contact me and I will give you some words of wisdom. Do not invest in Ponzi scheme. Is it Tom? To uphold this conversation with you and probably would love to talk to you. Okay, I'm into it. Tom. Really? He's so heavy into it. So oh, no, what investment opportunities? Oh, he's like he's heavily invested in it as well, but he's all into the shit coins. Oh well crypto's okay. Um I, I put some money in Shimu in you. Um so I had a mate that put um, 375 US in, got 5 million out of crypto, oh, then man. took it all out, and then put it all back in again. And lost 3 million. Oh, and no. he was devastated. And, um, you know, it was an interesting story to watch. You um, should have just got out. I know. And it's, a, you know, everyone, time is everything. We don't know when it's going to collapse. But I, for, at a, for a laugh, I thought I'm going to buy 100 bucks worth of um, Shimu in you, whatever that is. Am I saying it right? Yeah, yeah. And I finished up, I think I bought $300 and it went up to about $1,200 return and then I took the money out and I'm, I'm a winner because I didn't lose anything. But <laughs> that's, cool. that's, 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 that's the problem, right? Most people yeah. think it's 41 when, when the stock's gone up. But in reality, or the market or the price has gone up, in reality, you haven't won until you cash it out. Yeah, right? that's so right. So when it in your account, it doesn't matter how, you could have gone up 1,000% and you kept it yeah. in there and you're down 900%. You didn't win anything. Yeah. Right? Not enough. Um, but to answer your question, I work for a company called KWD. I'm the general manager of it. Um, yep. And we do websites, full stack marketing um, strategies and software. So, it's so been... KWD, is it .co.nz? .co.nz, yeah. Right. And that stands for? Uh, it used to stand for Kiwi Website Design. That's what that yep. was the company that we originated. But then since we went into marketing and into apps, we've um, abbreviated to KWD. Right. The so you do apps, apps as well? Yeah, software. So you'll find it under kwdapps.co.nz. Right. So, uh, kw.apps, you mean? Uh, kw.apps.co.nz. 
Right, okay. So I'm listening to people's psychology. They heard that and it went in one ear and out the other. So we're going to say it again. It's KW... The apps, A-P-P-S dot co dot N-Z. Right, yeah, so that's cool. And um, theoretically, they should just be able to search for an app developer Software, in Auckland yeah. and they yeah. should find you. They'll actually see three of our sites on the first page. So right. we've done yeah. that. We got, we got in there early, right? So from our strategy, from software, we got into the organics early. Yeah. Um, and we very strongly on organics. And we receive more inquiries now on software than websites per day. Um, wow. And that's a shift with the behavior in New Zealand. Businesses are starting to go, hey, what's going on with software internally, externally? And what about um, with apps? Because I, I used to have one myself for my business network, and it was a true app. It was standalone. Uh, it still talked to a database. But some of the apps now aren't actually apps. They're just really full-on mobile. All right, just stopping in there for a while. <clears throat> now, this this is what I quite liked about this. I just searched for App Developers NZ. So this was done. This was recorded four or five days ago. And the very first paid advert was... Um, them right and they've come up number one in the results now my research shows that um i think 17 percent of people actually click on the paid advertising so it's not going to cost you the world to actually be in the top of the results and then brand recognition should take over so i scroll down and i see four other paid adverts now if i was to search for their proper full name you'll probably find google maps would come up around about here but it's obviously not in that result if you can see that on a small screen but if i go down and i go one two three four five six and seven and eight the, the number eight now that's not bad that's eight's not bad being on the page one is very good because but being on page one twice is even better even if it has to be paid for so do a little bit of paid advertising you know, I mean, this whole video is actually about are you being exploited by SEO companies? Is SEO a scam? Well, if a company rings you up and says, look, we can get you on the top five, you know, we can give you five keywords and you'll be in the top of the search engines and you think, oh, great, because let's say, let's take the word loan. Now, I'm not sure of the actual stats, but I think it's about $14 a click for coming up when someone searches the word loan. Now, you're competing with banks. You're competing with, oh, no, mortgage brokers, whatever. And to be at the top of the results, every time somebody clicks it, it's going to cost you $14. It's over $10 or $14 around there. In America, it costs you $42. Every time somebody clicks that link, that's what the stats were a few years ago. But by having a well-balanced campaign, a bit of everything, that's what you really should um, have a goal of having. So let me finish up my waffle. I've only got a couple of minutes left. Bunch of websites. Web apps, yeah. So there's a, there's a difference, right? So there's web applications, mm. there's software solutions. Uh, we do both. Yeah. Wow, yeah. good stuff. Because that's a really hard industry to break into. So congratulations. Well, the hard part now is hardware, right? So one of the limitations we have is software that needs hardware. And because that's where that now needs an external manufacturing um, leg that we don't have and we have to partner with in order for hardware to work. Like for example, I'm wearing something called a whoop strap, which is a fitness bracelet. Yep. Um, but that works on an application, right? Yep. But you need the hardware to work the application. So we've realized that's the next installment of the businesses moving forward is that how do we fix the hardware um, part? All right. Good on you. Right. So um, are you open to say in six months time coming back on my podcast? Yeah, absolutely. This is off the record. I'm hoping you've stopped um, recording. Oh, no, I haven't. This is all part of it. They're going <laughs> to we have to finish it now. People are going to hundred percent. I'll jump on. I'll jump on whenever you need me to. I think that there's a lot of things that we can discuss that are, um, yeah. that could be healthy for anyone, um, viewing it or watching it or listening to it. Yeah. One thing I am doing, I'm, um, on a Monday night at nine 30 New Zealand time, seven 30 Australian time. I have what you call a think tank meeting and right. everyone's welcome to come along when you booked to come on this meeting you would have seen there may have been a think tank meeting uh it's not it's a free service and basically we just talk to businesses that want to vent and overcome obstacles um so if you know anyone that's interested in that it's not mondays at 9 30 did you say yeah and we I'll to tonight i'll put the kids to bed early and try and get into it cool how many kids you got two two how old yeah. are they one's uh five years old and one's eight months nine months oh mum's happy um they're off at school 
stay at home mum. No, no, so what, the five year olds at daycare still going to school, and then the eight months still what, should stay at oh, home. Oh, sorry, eight months. I said, I heard months. years. Yeah, I forgot no, you're 33. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, eight, eight months, eight months. So, I oh, know, good stuff. I really appreciate you coming online. Um, the worst scenario is this is now going to be a podcast, and it might turn worst scenario. <laughs> A tube cast, but I will stop recording. So um, I've even got music. So you've been listening to the Danny De Heck tube cast, um, and I've forgotten your name already, but it's Mark. How do you say your last name? Ed Kelling. Woo! And I'm Danny De Heck. So thank you for listening, and we'll let that fade out, and we'll say goodbye to. Yeah. So there you go. So there you, that wasn't. I know that's been an hour and a half long, or an hour forty long. But when you get a phone call, cold calling and they're from your own country, um, don't do what I do, get grumpy with them, because it is like a, a red flag to a bull. Um, and if you are doing any SEO stuff, you know, and you don't know anything, and your website's not working, then get up to speed, you know, put some gauge it, you know, put some Google Analytics on the back end of your website, and if you are getting three, five, ten visits a day to your website, and you're wondering why it's not working, then reach out to a company like the one I just interviewed, Kiwi, uh, KW, what is it, KW something? Oh, I'm terrible, aren't I? But anyway, I think you got it. Um, Kiwi Website Design, I think it's called. But if you search for anything, they'll come up in the top 10. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I've got burpees, don't drink beer and do podcasting. It's been a long day for me. It is now 20 to 12 at night. I hope you got some wisdom out of my um, SEO video and I hope that it saved you some money and so the answer to the question what do you think is SEO a scam put it in the comment section hit the, the like button if you enjoyed my video and are you being exploited well in short a lot of companies are out there just trying to make money quick so talk to the guys build a good relationship up with them and see if they're a good fit for your business before you fork out your money. And there are a lot of tricks and t- tips that you can do to make your website come up. It's not just a, a few words and your website comes up and voila, you're successful. It's a whole combination of things that you need to do to make your website rank. And if you need any help, reach out to me, reach out to Mark, and find these guys and ask them if they can help you, you know, build your online presence. I'm Danny DeHeck, that's my music, and you've been watching the What To Heck podcast. No, you haven't. You've been listening to the What To Heck podcast, and you've been listening to the Tubecast. So I will put this out as a podcast as well. So thanks for listening, and once again, thanks for subscribing. Hit the bell, and you'll be notified when my new video comes out. You've been listening to Danny DeHeck.